everyone, and welcome to another live edition of Wealth Building Wednesday. We are excited, excited, excited every single Wednesday to bring you from 10 o'clock a.m. until 1030 live on Facebook and YouTube, and then again at 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on our media partner, WBFZ 05.3, an audio rebroadcasting of the great information that we bring to you again every single Wednesday. Wealth Building Wednesday is a project brought to you by TRHT Selma. TRHT stands for Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation. And I know folks are like, well, what in the world does building wealth have to do with truth, racial healing, or transformation. Now, wealth, first of all, transforms a whole lot of things, right? But racial healing, because we know that in this country, we have a wealth gap, and we want to make sure that we are able to help folks close that wealth gap. And a part of the way and the, of the ways that we're doing that is to talk to every single Wednesday, we talk to an expert, Right now, we're in the midst of a series for entrepreneurs, folks who are considering opening their own small business or small business owners who've been quite successful. But what we are talking about are aspects of small business ownership. And we are proud to welcome back Miss Sandy Hesley this morning. She is an expert credit counselor with Lifelines Credit, uh, Lifelines Counseling, which is not just credit counseling, but they provide a truly comprehensive service, y'all. Whether you walk in and you need um, to talk to someone because you're grieving or, or if you want to walk in and you need to talk to someone because you want to make sure that your children's children are well prepared, mm -hmm. right? And they know how to manage that thing called credit, then they can help you with that. And they service, right, Sandy? You all service all across the state of Alabama, and even oh, the yeah. Alabama, right? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. welcome back. How have you been in 2022? <laughs> Listen, thankful to be here, yes. COVID free. Yes. And Amen. just thanking God that I, I was able to, to walk in in 2022 with, you know, as the elders used to say, with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Yeah. And my right mind. Amen. Amen to that. And we want to thank everyone for tuning in. Want to remind you that if you're watching us live, please feel free to tag and share this information. Uh, these videos are stored on the Facebook pages of the Selma Center for Nonviolence, as well as the Black Belt Community Foundation. So we want to help folks. Right. So if we want to be seen as friendly, right? The friends, yeah. help friends, right? They you, yeah. they say your friends don't let friends drive drunk. Well, <laughs> friends don't let friends have bad credit because so yeah. come on, friend. Look, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about, um, from this small business perspective, about credit. So wanted to ask you, um, you know, that uh, we've talked about the fact that we're in the midst of this series about entrepreneurship and small businesses. And does it actually matter? Does credit matter when it comes to starting a small business? It does. Um, it uh, does. It, it matters a lot. Um, even on a personal side, and we're going to, you know, talking that. And if, if I kind of bounce around, forgive me. But mm -hmm. just like with personal credit, you have to have credit to mm -hmm. buy a house, uh, to, you know, to get into purchasing a home or whatever. So you have to establish a credit credit if you hadn't established it already. And it works the same way with business. You have to have credit. Um, in order to purchase inventory, you know, things of that nature. So, yes, you need credit because you're going to have to buy stuff, as we used to say, on time occasionally. Yes. So credit is just as important on the business side as it is on the personal side. Awesome. So now that's important for us to know. So if you didn't know, now you know, okay? We want to make sure that our folks know and have access to improving our personal and building business credit. So now if I'm working on building my business credit, how is my or can my personal credit be impacted? The thing of it is, is that initially um, your your business and your personal are going to are going to link. They're going to okay. be linked initially. Okay. But what 
you know, people really have to realize is that there, there's a process and there are steps that you need to take. And the first important step is to um, establish a business uh, structure, choose a business structure. Mm -hmm. Like if you choose to be a sole proprietorship, then you mainly are going to be operating more so from your personal uh, credit side, if that makes sense. Okay. So that's because you've chosen to be, uh, you know, uh, you, you've chosen that type of business structure. What you want to do is you want to get into choosing like, am I a corporation? Am I a LLC? You know, mm -hmm. things of that nature, because that is what's going to set you apart from that's going to set your business apart from your personal side. So, like I said, it's a process. You need to choose the, the type of business structure. You need to get your tax ID number. Okay. That's going to separate you as well because just like, and that's why I say a lot of the business uh, mimics the personal because just like you have your social security number on the business side, you have an EIN number, tax ID number. Mm -hmm. So you need to get that. You need to uh, get you a, a tax ID number and you need to open a business account to separate your business from your personal. You shouldn't be commingling your business funds and running them through your personal checking account. So you need to establish um, a separate uh, checking account. So, you know, those are just kind of steps that you need to take. If, if I hope I answered your question. Absolutely. Because see, those are the types of steps that folks need to be aware of. You know, we've um, seen and heard about on the news, even PPP loans and folks oh, applying, wow. <laughs> applying for PPP Girl, That's a whole can of worms. Ooh, yes. Oh, my yes, word. And, and, and for many reasons, right? Mm -hmm. But in order to qualify, you know, there are folks who, you know, did EINs at the last minute and things like that. And even though, like I, I've even heard that people say, well, oh, well, they've forgiven my loans. But please understand that the documents that you signed are granting the IRS the ability to perform audits. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you said that you had a business worth $100,000 this year and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it disappears from any tax records mm -hmm. for the next 10 years, mm -hmm. that's going to trigger something right for the IRS. And see, that's what we, uh, you know, especially with in my banking world, and thank God I left banking right before all <laughs> that stuff came out because that's a nightmare. Yeah. But what people have to realize is that even on the personal side, you always want to have an audit trail. That's what yes. we call an audit trail. You want to be able to say where this money, I don't care if you're swiping your debit card 10 times a day, it's better to do that because you have an audit trail. I can physically show what I did with my money. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with a business, especially a small business, it is so important for you to be able to do that. And then you will really appreciate it when we're in tax time. When tax time comes and you'll be able to, to document, show documentation of what you did with your money. So that's why that's one of the important steps when establishing a small business. Separate your funds. Open up you a business checking account so that you can properly um, document and you can show proof of what you did with your funds. And, and now that is so important. I'm so glad that you, again, brought up those basic steps of getting your EIN, which is absolutely um, provided free of cost. Um, that is a number, like you said, very much like your social security numbers, mm -hmm. like a, a, an ID number for your yeah. Um, and it's free of cost, irs.gov, mm -hmm. get your EIN for free, and then establishing that business checking account so that monies that flow into your life because of your business go through your business. And that does, you can pay yourself. Oh, right? yeah. That Absolutely. You can, can totally separate mm -hmm. those funds that are coming in because of maybe you still have your nine to five. So your paycheck goes to your personal and money that you earn as a result of your business goes into your business account. Exactly. So now, are business and personal credit at all alike? What's the difference between my personal credit and my business credit? They really are a lot alike and they should be treated, you know, as such. Okay. Um, just like a personal credit, business credit determines whether your company can be trusted to pay back debt if okay. you're extended debt. 
You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, you you go through the three credit bureaus on the personal side. We know Equifax, mm -hmm. TransUnion, and um, girl, I can't even think. It's three: <laughs> Equifax, TransUnion, mm -hmm. and I think of the other one in a minute. I'm having a moment. So you go through the three credit bureaus on the personal side. Then on the business side, you have something similar. Mm -hmm. And um, believe it or not, Equifax has a small business side. So okay. they monitor small business um, credit. And then you have this agency called Dunn and Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's how, you know, they're similar. Both of them have their own entities that you go through as far as uh, getting credit and stuff like that. The interesting thing that I found out, and I had to really go through the Experian. That's the other one. I knew it was going to come to me. Uh, <laughs> that was going to bug me. Is that with um, with your the uh, the two credit uh, bureaus, personal and business, with mm -hmm. personal, we know the scores. Your scores can go from like three hundred to eight fifty. So, and we know the scores are like 670 on up are considered really good scores, but on business credit scores, they range from zero to a hundred. Okay. And with lenders considering scores over 75 to be better and low risk. So, you know, they both of them have a scoring system, but they're, you know, slightly different. So, um, in addition to influence and approval or denial, the scores can determine repayment terms and interest rates, just like with personal side. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if somebody is looking to extend credit to a small business. And with small business, let me fall back. When you're looking at extending credit, you um, you know, go to vendors to see if uh, I want to establish a credit line with you. Mm -hmm. You can go to a bank and apply for a small business credit card to, you know, establish credit. You can go to a bank to apply for a small business credit uh, line of credit to establish credit. You see what I'm saying? So those mm -hmm. are different ways that you can establish credit. But those uh, entities are going to report to, you know, Equifax Small Business done and brought um done in Bradstreet, mm -hmm. just like, you know, creditors, credit card companies, mortgage companies, things of that nature, report to Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So we have a question. This is great information. Y'all, again, want to remind you that you are tuned in live to Wealth Building Wednesday. We broadcast every single Wednesday, 10 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, as well as at 1.30. We rebroadcast the audio on WBFZ 105.3. Um, we have a question from the audience. Um, she wants to know... Um, if you are trying to get business credit, will they look at your personal credit as well? Is that something that we need to be concerned about when we're um, looking to establish business credit is uh, the impact of our personal credit? You should be concerned because when you what 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 you have to look at is when you are first starting out. And this is me flipping to my old banking side. Yes. When you're first starting out your business has nothing to go on. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. But the primary uh, of that business, which is you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So they're going to have to look at your personal credit because, and that's why I said early on that in the beginning, they're linked. Personal and business are going to have to be linked because you're just established, you, you know, you're just establishing yourself. And so until you can, you know, establish your business and get it, get it built up, then uh, a lender has no choice but to fall back on your credit. How did you, you know, how did you handle your credit? And they will look at a proven credit based on your personal um, credit. So. You need to be concerned, yes, because nine times out of ten, they're going to fall back on. That's all they have to go on is, is basically what I'm saying. 
Okay. And so I know that's called like a personal guarantee. I think when they ask you to. You're guaranteeing that particular debt. Okay. So yes, you're getting, and, and you're at the, you're doing two things. You're establishing your business. You're establishing credit for your business. And yes, you're the guarantor. You're okay. guaranteeing that particular debt. And again, there is based on your personal credit. Okay. So now we do have another um, question from the audience. We are super happy that folks are very engaged. Wanted to know, do you see a trend of small African-American businesses not getting higher lines of credit through banks? This is an excellent, excellent, excellent observation. Do you see that um, in your in your work? Do you see that, that small businesses that are led by Black folks are not as... Um, easily credited with higher lines of credit? You know, I hope I say this right, and but I'm just going to be just real with you. Because, you know, before I came here, the uh, location that I worked at in banking was predominantly Black. Okay. It, it was 90%. 90 okay. That was the clientele there. And... We had a lot of declines, but let me say it wasn't so much because they were black. And I think I said this on a on one of our sessions before, we mm -hmm. perished for lack of knowledge. Because we're not um, that savvy about credit. You understand what I'm saying? Because we were not uh properly uh training regarding credit which this platform is absolutely phenomenal in trying to do that mm -hmm. and it's a blessing and hats off to you Lydia and your group because of what you're doing you're doing a great work um, because they weren't educated properly they didn't understand the importance of credit until they needed it right then mm -hmm. and that prevented them from being able to get approval because of credit issues so what I did, I spent a lot of my time trying to educate them, trying to help them uh, understand the importance of credit, the importance of paying debt on time, paying it as agreed, uh, the importance of not overextending yourself, the importance of not maxing out credit cards when you get them, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was spend time educating you getting things in order, then coming back and reapplying, and then getting that approval that you try to get seven to eight months prior. You see what I'm saying? So, yes. yeah, I saw a lot of declines, but it wasn't so much as because of the color of their skin. It was because of their lack of knowledge and understanding of the importance of credit. But once they got that understanding, they were able to get what it, what it was they had initially wanted, but it just took a little time. So does that answer your question? I think I think that does address the question. Um, I do also just want to quickly piggyback on what you're saying in that it is not always um, what, what, what you just said about it's not always the color of, of folks skin. But now I will say that as someone who has experience working with larger banks as well as credit unions, that sometimes credit unions can be a safer place to learn, like to take those baby steps that you're describing and establishing our agree. and being mm -hmm. able to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Because larger banks, when you go in, they expect you to be prepared, right? So yeah. when they ask you, you know, what your long-term goals, what's going to be the return on investment, when they say ROI and you don't know what that means, they're going to be like, hey, wait a minute, I don't know if we, like mm -hmm. you don't even know what simple, you know, um, acronyms mean. Mm -hmm. So that's important um, for us to be placing ourselves in a position where we can win and that we can win together. So maybe a larger bank isn't the first, even though it's a recognizable brand, but maybe consider a credit union to take the baby steps and then and prepare yourself for the larger banks. And I will interject this as well, Lydia. Yeah. What I found in my experience, and, and like I said, I was in banking for like 29 years. I'm not negating uh, favoritism, nepotism, right. not by no means, because right. I'm not, you know, delusional. I know that that can happen. Right. But I will say this, 
what has happened over the years when I first started, you came in, you sat down with the bank officer, fill out your application, they went over everything with you, and they made a decision. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That opened the door for a lot of, you know, favoritism, right. uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. But now we're on a scoring system. Mm-hmm. They don't know who we're seeing. You understand what I'm saying? Because when we go in and key in that application and key in the numbers that you put on it, it comes back because it, and it pulls your credit. And based on the income you're reporting and the credit bureau that, that we pull from, that mm-hmm. determines whether or not we're able to help you or we're able to not help you. So that took a lot of that, that prejudice, that favoritism and all of that out. Not saying that that's completely gone away, right. but it took a lot of that out. So you may stumble upon a loan officer that you go in to see that is not as helpful as you feel they should be. They're mm-hmm. not going an extra mile to help you. Right. That's when it becomes an issue as well. And I would, you know, recommend that you report it to, you know, you know, higher up. Absolutely. Because you can get that now. It's, you know, sometimes they do a, take a little extra step. They may be able to help get that approval for you and things of that nature. But for the most part, it's it's a number game. It's basically what I'm trying to say. Okay. So now we did have another question from the audience asking about acquiring vehicles through your business. Um, is that a recommendation? Is that something that is um that you think is a good thing, like, or how would we go about acquiring um, vehicles in our um, business name, especially he said uh, for newer businesses? I mean, and depending on the type of business that you have, you may very well need a vehicle, you know, and it goes back to the same thing with, uh, be it a business line of credit, business credit card, you would have to be the guarantor for that loan. You can still get it in, you know, get it in the business name, but you would be guaranteeing that loan. And again, it will fall back on the individual and, the, you know, your credit strength. How strong is your credit? So, yeah, you can do it. It, it may be necessary, again, for the type of business that you have. But it, at the end of the day, it's going to fall back on that individual and um, how strong their credit is to be able to carry that debt. Okay. So now wanted to ask about some good habits that we can have, because you talked about earlier, <laughs> Lord, that business credit and personal credit are actually very similar. So since they're similar, are there some things that we can encourage folks to do um, or habits that we can encourage people to have when it comes to keeping good credit scores to building good credit scores and to keeping those good credit scores i mean it's a matter of both of them are pretty you know in a situation like that personal and business are going to work the same it's okay. a matter of you making sure that you pay your debts as agreed as i mentioned earlier paying them on time um with a business making sure you have a good report with your vendors when invoices are sent make sure you pay them in a timely manner. Um, And it's really that simple. It's not anything that, you know, you have to do, you know, like a backflip and, you know, or anything like that. It's just a matter of making sure that you're paying your debt on time, paying it as agreed, and not overextending yourself, not going out and getting too much credit. And then if you do have a line of credit, do everything you can to not max out, you know, use, use your credit wisely. You know, do I really need this particular purchase at this time or can I wait? You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. That is what you have to do. You know, um, on one of the previous episodes, you talked about um, if we wanted to say, get a new car to start putting those um, car notes in the bank, like start paying yourself in a separate account to set those things aside. Mm -hmm. And as, as you were saying about paying debts as agreed and making sure that we're paying our debts um, on time, I thought about that because even as a small business starting out, 
it may mean that in your business plan, right, when we're putting mm -hmm. those things on paper, that the strategy we take doesn't necessarily depend on having everything all at once, but that we pace ourselves. And as a result of the earnings that we that we collect, you know, from owning the small business, that we start setting those things aside. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because you need to with anything. And that's just me. Um, I. When I got my car, the last car that I got, I called my insurance company to see how much my insurance would go up. Mm -hmm. I went online to see what the maintenance was like. When I need to get a new set of tires, what am I looking at? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You have to look at all of that. Look at the big picture. That's all I was saying. When you get ready to, to purchase something, is this something that I really need right now? Or can I wait? And like you said, uh, and, and like I said before, put your money in a separate savings account. Start paying that car note before you get that car so that you can make sure that this is a debt that I can comfortably carry. And, um, and that is very important. But for me, it goes all back to planning. You don't uh, plan to fail, but you'll fail if you don't plan. Mm -hmm. And so you need to plan. It all goes back to planning. And being prepared, even with with um, a small business, establishing a business savings, having money tucked away for emergencies. That's the kind of stuff that you have to look at. Um, so, yeah, you're exactly right. You know what? And even in saying that, just thinking about people, um, we have some phenomenal uh, chefs in our community. I'm not going to call them cooks. We have some chefs in our community, honey, that, I mean, whether they're self-taught or professionally taught and the considerations, right, whether you want a brick and mortar or just uh, starting off with a food truck. Yeah. Right? Because a yeah. food truck is actually a less expensive approach. Yeah. Um, you still have to have licensing, but you don't have as high of an overhead. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, and and it's also look you can easily sell a food truck look yeah, yeah, you <laughs> if, right. things, if things don't go well right or you mm -hmm. seem to transition there are lots of options right but to rebrand a building honey imagine if pizza hut decided not to yeah. sell anymore you're right <laughs> and they became the bagel shack right yeah, you're right and now they've got to rebrand all of these buildings mm -hmm. But, you know, pacing ourselves, there is nothing wrong with that. Lord knows, I think social media and, and so many other things, microwaves even have caused us to be so uh, to gravitate towards the instant gratification. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. That, that yeah, saving. Exactly right. Listen. And, it, you it, have it, to, and you have to realize that, especially with the small business, yes. it's not going to flip overnight. Right. It's, it's, it takes time. So going to it with that mindset, because I know, like I said, in my banking world, we would tell people two to three years yep. for you to really feel like you are established and you starting to see a turn. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, don't and it's something that you can't give up on. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get discouraged, but you just got to keep plugging. But it's not it's not something that's that takes place overnight and boom, I'm just, you know, huge business. It takes time. And you have to just again, like you said, pace yourself. You have to be prepared and you have to order your steps. You understand what I'm saying? Like you said, start out with a food truck. Eventually. I'll be able to get me a building. You know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. Absolutely. So now last question, I know it's about time for us to wrap up, but if my business suffered some losses, and as a matter of fact, we actually had a comment related to this in the pandemic shakeup. If my business has suffered um, some losses over the past few months, right? Um, and mm -hmm. say, you know, some bills, you know, I got behind on some things. What steps do I need to take Um even considering the moment we're in with income tax refunds being issued, right? What steps should I take um, with moving forward? Can business credit be recovered? Yeah, it can. I mean, it's just a matter of you uh, con making contact with that creditor. You know what I'm saying? And getting caught up and um, making sure that you keep track of your credit uh, report. You know, just like when you do your personal, keep track of it. See what's on there. 
Um, if there's something that's uh, not right, you know, immediately contacting that, that bureau and saying, hey, we need to make an adjustment. I want to put a note on here. This is not correct. Um, and like I said, just reestablishing yourself, uh, getting a small business credit card or a line of credit and, you know, use it, pay it down, use it, pay it down to help start rebuilding. But uh, and keeping your credit usage low. That will help start to rebuild. And really the easiest way to rebuild, honestly, is if you have established credit, focusing on what you already have, getting that paid down, getting that caught up. And then over time, your credit, you'll see your credit score improving. Well, I tell you what, you have truly offered us, as always, some great nuggets, some great information. We did have a question and we're going to pick back up um, on this question from our audience in just a short, short, when we come back with you, Miss Sandy no, Hesley, I'm listen, is a credit expert. She is at Lifelines Credit Lifelines Counseling. I don't know why you want to call y'all because you're comprehensive. You all have such a, a unique model when it comes to counseling that I, and I'm still so very impressed and I look forward to us having something, being able to mimic what you all offer in the Dallas County and across the black belt, because you being able to respond to a family's needs and concerns, whether it again is, is, is something based in trauma or something mm -hmm. based in financial health, right. Or wellness, yeah. mm -hmm. then you coming to one place. Yeah. Right? Such is such a convenient thought, and it takes the jab out of this word called yeah. counseling. Yeah. <laughs> so you all have a wonderful model at Lifelines Counseling. They are located in Mobile, but Sandy Hesley is on board to help anybody in the state of Alabama and anybody. across the border panhandle. So if you have any questions, we'll definitely make sure to leave the information in the chat. How can people find you, Miss Hesley? Um, you can, and I should have typed it in, but you can email me, and that's really the easiest way. Uh, S Hesley, S H E S L E Y at C C C S Mobile dot O R G. And so we're, I'm leaving that in the, um, in the chat so people can log on and see that information again her name is sandy hesley she is a certified credit counselor she is at lifelines counseling you can reach her via email at s hesley that is s-h-e-s-l-e-y at c-c-c S mobile M O B I L E dot O R G. Miss mm -hmm. Hesley, it is always a pleasure to have you here. Um, and we'll definitely have you back and start with that question about virtual offices. We have okay. lots of questions about small business ownership and how to establish credit. So we're looking forward to having you back really, really, really soon. <laughs> so uh, for those of you all who have been tuned in, thank you so much. Please feel free to tag and share this information with your friends. Y'all, we broadcast. Wealth Building Wednesday every single Wednesday from 10 a.m. until 1030. If you are not able to tune in live, then you can always catch our audio rebroadcast on our media partner, WBFZ 105.3, or you can simply log into Facebook or watch us on YouTube anytime you want and share this information. Again, Ms. Hesley, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy it. Yes, and you always, honey, dropping those nuggets of knowledge. So we thank you and we look forward to seeing you um, until next Wednesday. Y'all get out here. Let's build this wealth. Yeah.